Hi everyone and welcome to Open Channel. So we've got a recording from of our live panel over at Thought Bubble, which we recorded a few weekends ago. And we just wanted to do a quick introduction to the panel so before we headed into it. Uh, Flory and Tom both headed over to the UK for the first time to join us and it was really cool to kind of be able to get all of us together. In terms of what we actually spoke about on the day, can't remember. No idea. Can't remember. Can any of you guys remember? I interrupted. You put, out, you put it out to questions and nobody had any questions and then we were like, ah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the start. Of was the wasn't that the first question? Like, does anybody have questions? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then it turned out to be quite fun. I remember yeah. I had a really good time. I enjoyed doing it and it was great. And we do really appreciate everybody that came over and and um, and asked questions and joined in and listening. We do like doing these things and we'll try and do more of them moving forward. But I think that's about it. So anything you guys want to say about Thought Bubble or about the panel before we uh, kick it over to the recording? It was amazing. Just listen to it and enjoy it. Good night. I just want to say one thank you to Vittorio Conza. Is that how I pronounce it? Cool. Thank you very much, Vic, for doing the recording on yep. this. It was a great big help, and we really do appreciate great it. Great, dude. Um, and again, Tom, Flory, thank you very much for making the trip over. It was fun, it was wasn't it? Was it? It was fun. I did now enjoy I'm... it. All those people, all that time, all the, you know, it was good. There was a lot. Lots happened, put it that way. Mm. It was fun. It think... was fun Saturday, people. It was good. Yeah. I'd stop anyway, here's today. our bo- here's our in completely incomprehensible show. Take it away, us. <laughs> Hi and welcome, everybody. This is the Vice Press Open Channel Panel. A lot of words, I know, but uh, oh, I'm glad that you're here. And uh, yeah, we are live at Thought Bubble. This is my first Thought Bubble, so that's going to be exciting. So glad that. A lot of people came out to hear us babble on uh, the yeah. usual way we do at home. I know there's no overlay and uh, some uh, some delay with questions and all that. So uh, we, first of all, I want to say uh, thank you for coming out. And uh, especially if you have questions, raise your hand because we love to have some questions, don't we? This yeah, we also didn't prepare anything. No, completely. <laughs> so unprepared. this is going to be loose as a goose. Yeah. <laughs> so if anyone's if anyone was here for the jock panel, this is going to be nothing like jock's panel. <laughs> Not professional. No. As per usual. But yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so if you don't know these people here, uh, all the way over there, that's uh, Mr. Matt Ferguson. You've probably seen his posters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then we got this way, uh, all the way from Australia. Mr. Flory. That's me. Hi. Uh, it's not Dol- It's not Dolly, right? Don't start. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, <laughs> the, this person here. Hello. He he runs Vice Press uh, on an administrative level, uh, on a creative level. <laughs> this guy over there. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. James Hancho. And uh, yeah, me, I'm Tom, uh, doing Drop, and uh, you've probably heard about that as well if you're in the scene here. Um, and I'm helping the guys produce yeah. this podcast. Yeah, and he's got books for sale as well, as he yeah. keeps telling yeah, everyone not, that comes yeah, up to the booth. Oh, you even bought one. Yeah. one. Oh, okay. You may, oh, have, yeah, you may have heard what, what it. What kind of salesman am I? Huh? For 35 pounds, even though it's got a dollar sign on the back. Hey, it's the same as one one. Are right? we at parity with the, the dollar right now? Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. No one told me. <laughs> No one told my bank. <laughs> the shipping, you know how they... Yeah. <laughs> that's, like, that's not Australian dollar, though. Yes, yes, American. yes, yes, yes. Australian yes. dollars are worth what, like... Uh, this is kind of like peanut shells. Yeah. You just kind of throw them all over the I'm floor. And over funny it. money. Yeah. Yeah, you should... That's how you can hear your self better. Right, that's the preamble. What yeah. are we doing? So, questions. <laughs> <laughs> questions, we've we're gonna go. We're gonna go in reverse. In, on, a, on a serious note, we did kind of think like the whole idea. Yes, we did the screening. We thought that was fun. We're trying to do more social stuff where we kind of getting folks together and actually doing something decent. And we thought actually we would throw stuff over to questions because we've got Flory here. He's never around, and we've got Tom here as well, and I'm obviously sometimes who's sometimes around, mm-hmm. and we've got Matt. So, in some ways, it's a cop out, but other, in other ways, we thought that you guys would probably have more interesting stuff to ask us than us kind of coming up with the usual <laughs> presentation. I put these on because I quite like the silent disco vibe that we've What's all got like? going I on. Put on. All right, you it's go a lot that. clearer. You cut out the um, the din from over there. So, I think we've got a lady with a mic over there. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> Otherwise, this is going to be incredibly short. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that. That's rubbish. How much? Like how much time do we have to film? 
Uh, 45, 45 minutes. minutes. So we are, what, three minutes in? I, I can do a sales pitch for this. You could talk about <laughs> posters and stuff. Something we did want to talk about a little bit, me, me and Matt had a panel at the MC, at MCM last week where we talked around, we've been, uh, at the moment, there's been a lot of collabor- collaborative posters that you guys have done together. Yeah. Yeah. And we've been working on the Vault Collection, which is a series of 4K releases for Warner Brothers and Universal. We um, we've got Tim from the audience here, uh, from Spark, who we've been working with. A lot of those posters were done uh, collaboratively, co- collaboratively between the two of you guys. Yeah, correct. Also, Evil Dead 2, yesterday for the screening, was done together. Correct. I think it'd be interesting to find out more about the process when it comes to working on a poster together. Like, let's take, I don't know, let's take Evil Dead, for example. Mm. Who came up with that composition, and where did it go from there in terms of then the back and forth in terms of looking at it? Okay. Go. <laughs> uh, well, I like to be collaborative with everybody, and that's like good commercial work, which is what I do is commercial work, is being collaborative, because you've got a client, and you've got to fit a brief, usually, and that's a collaborative process with whoever you're working with. Mm-hmm. So through that, you get back and forth naturally, ideas bounce off from mm-hmm. each other, and um, well, then you can take that further in a professional way, mm-hmm. like me and this idiot here do well, re- at the end of the day uh, I'm very busy and it's nice to have somebody <laughs> do all the work for me <laughs> yeah well there's so it's that. more of an outsourcing program it helps to have two people working on it especially when he's in Australia uh, and I'm asleep yeah I can be doing he can stuff can be working well I think I think for for me it's as an artist that's having ideas and you're doing this and you're scribbling away you can get very stuck in things to have someone that you can immediately go oi look at this and he'll just go eh or pfft, like straight away we don't have we have a lot of shorthand don't we like we don't we don't muck around we don't mince no. words no. and to have someone that you can trust that's going to say how it is I think is invaluable like time wise and just it, you can get stuck in things I think we, we're all in our own little caves which is where I like to be but that sometimes doesn't doesn't breed like the best no, well, it, doesn't, it doesn't create the best outcome sometimes if you just stick in your own head the whole yeah, time you'd have somebody say mm. oh that could be better or yeah come up with a better oh, idea as, as much as it's like it's good that we're not in the same room sometimes because I can sort of kick around and throw things for half an hour after <laughs> he's told me I've worked for an entire day on something he goes it's shit and I'm just like well <laughs> what was that what just give, 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 give me a bit more but then you know you sort of start to you calm down you start to think things through and you go Jesus he's right isn't he I have to, do, I have to redo that whole face for the like 14th time or whatever yeah. it is but you know at the end of the day I think I think since I started listening to him and maybe I, I don't want to I speak I do listen to you but yeah. since you listen to me a little bit every now and then I think the the, the final product is better for it right yeah Good well question. I was Good I was talking recently about this, about um, don't put in, because I had a thought process then. I was thinking of something and it's gone. What were you talking about before? Uh, critique. critique. No, it wasn't a critique. I, I wanted to know for the floor, by the yes, way, sir. what's the worst critique you got? had a real Jesus. good nugget of information. The, be- the, the You jerk. The worst critique that he's given me. It's not really critique, it's like we're so, it's hard to explain, but it's really like a two-headed beast most of the time, isn't it? And I, yeah. the thing is too, like, I, I know, I already know before I send it to him if something's not quite there, but I can't admit it because I've spent, I don't know, 10 hours like... You wouldn't send it otherwise. Exactly. It's just, yeah. a, it's almost like a, it's like when you really want to buy that new pair of like Apple AirPods or something like that. So you just send them to your mate that you know is just going to go, oh yeah, you should get those. You don't send them to the guy that, that <laughs> you know, you just, I just need to be confirmed so that yeah. I can sort of resign myself to having to redo all the work again, you know? Uh, I think a good artist, part of the job is knowing when something is good, right, mm. and having good taste. Mm. And you can look at something you've done and go, that's not right. I need to make it right. And then you just have to work it until it, it looks good. Yeah. I was talking about this the other day mm. with somebody. I can't remember who it was. Probably me. So the problem is, I guess, with people that don't do good work is that they just can't tell. Sure. Whether something's good or bad. Yeah, you can right. be an incredibly talented painter. You can render because, like I always say, like I'm, there's no way I'm the best artist, but I will 
keep going over and over and over and over and over again until it it's your own until worst it's, critic until you know? it's good yeah until the end product is good and we're happy with it well I think that's yeah. something like with you two working together and also with the artists that we're working with something Matt you're very good at is kind of pushing that little bit more those mm. fingers aren't quite right that face isn't quite right do it again try this adjust this yeah. but also you do it in quite a um, you're very honest and I think yeah. that's a, but that's needed. That's needed in some way because we want, yeah. like, when it whether it's vice press or whether it's working for a client, we want that. We want to represent that artist in the best way possible and do the best work. Mm. Yeah. So it's kind of look, try this, have a go. But you also get involved quite hands on to to help and develop. And I think that's something that's probably um, under acknowledged a little bit in terms well, of the it's art of direction, it. right? How do you do art direction? You either go let somebody do what they want um, or you can sort of uh, encourage them to it's, it's try something different and go outside of the box and explore things that maybe they hadn't thought about and just say look maybe that could be a bit better yeah hmm. I think that's that's an important thing to, 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 to be critical yeah I, I think the way that from from the guy that's getting art directed by you like you you as grumpy as um, you generally are, <laughs> it's like when you, uh, you, the, you, it's a gentle, oh, I'm assuming more so with other people than me, I get the hard nudge, but it's usually a gentle nudge with a, just like a, a seed, like you, you'll plant a little seed and just be like, just a bit better on that type or whatever, and you're like, oh, okay. But then that, yeah. that, gets, that gets your own cogs going and then you realize, yes, I could do that a bit better. And then we end up somewhere good. Yeah. I just you, need somebody to do that for me. Well, that was me. I, you. I thought that was me. Yeah. <laughs> but not all the time. Do you enjoy that aspect of it, that kind of mentoring aspect of it, when you're working with an artist and you're helping them out and you kind of see them developing? I don't know if I would think about it as enjoyment, as sort of like, I've got no choice. Because I would just be like, <laughs> yeah. why didn't I tell them that was bad? And then the poster comes out and it's bad. Yeah, it well, well, not bad, but not like as good as, as it could, as it could be. be. It does it benefits nobody. Like it doesn't benefit them as a company it doesn't benefit our eyeballs as a viewer it doesn't benefit the the artist when it comes to like you know sales and stuff there's all that you got to think about too other than just the yeah. artwork because we're i don't know what we're actually called but it was like commercial art what are we, well, yeah we make commercial we're, we're making products we're not making paintings to go in a gallery so you got to think about it in a way that this well, you make it a result yeah? is a, for like yeah jurassic park you're not making oh, it yeah. for your own um your own mm. self you're not like oh I, I, this, this is my art you're making it for people who like Jurassic mm. Park yeah. so you've got to think about it differently to just doing art which is what a problem it's easy to fall into if you're like an artist that you sort of think the art is more important but it's really the person buying the thing yeah. when you're making a, a, a poster that's an interesting or the person going to watch the film you know so you've got to mm. tell a story you've got to mm. It's a different process completely to just making art. You know? I think that's a really interesting thing, like that I've seen today. Is just like people's nervous slash smiling slash whatever faces coming up physically in the real world and going, "I like that. I'd like to have that." Because I've never, I've never experienced that. It's also, it's also nebulous, isn't it? Like, it's, yeah. they either they either fly out into the internet or they don't sometimes, yeah. and it you, it's really hard to grasp why. Like, there's posters here that have hung around forever but some kid dressed as Spider-Man comes up and that's the is the best thing he's ever seen and that's all he wanted for the whole day and his dad bought it for him yeah. and that's like well that that's that's the kid I was kind of yeah, yeah. thinking about for the end product it's that experience know? isn't it yeah it makes it worthwhile to come in it's a, these things is, is, is um, those interactions yeah and I think that's what people. makes Thought Bubble different we've done Matt we've had the good fortune of doing other conventions recently and not to yeah, bash that, on other that, that, well I'll bash on it you, <laughs> bash it. you go for it yeah. and it's like they're just soulless yeah, it's, it's just awful. like it's just like um, commercialised commodities whereas actually here you kind of sense it walking around and you sense it looking at all the independent creators and from the team that put them together you can tell that people actually care and there's kind well, of well that's why that's why we always say when we get a new artist we always say here's the a list of, of, of titles we can do artwork for is there any that take your interest yeah. or any that you like because I don't want to be like we need to have a poster for 
so and so, whatever it is, and then they hate that. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. And but then because they've got a job, they might want to just do it, but then it could become a bit soulless. Mm. I always try to find when I do work an aspect to it that I um, that I like or care about, or find interesting, because then you can really latch onto that. Yeah. And I think people can tell when something isn't. When you've just done it for the cash, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's that soul thing, isn't it? I, I think always, I always manage to find something to latch on to. There was an art. There was. I'm not. I'll not name names, but there's an artist that I know that's kind of done a series of posters, and there was kind of very much a uh, a crass commercialism behind. He knew those brands, those posters would sell, but he had no interest in those particular films. And uh, I love, I mean, how dare you? Cool. I love the Star Wars prequels. What are you talking about? <laughs> how very dare you? Outrageous. Outrageous. But you can, but it comes through, doesn't it? People can tell. I think people, whether it's whether it's kind of intentional or just innate inside them, people can sell when they're being flogged something, when they're being sold something, where there's no, where it's just a, a, a kind of churning stuff out for the sake of churning stuff out. Um, well, I never think about selling the stuff. No. Ever. No. But I think about I think I think about what people might like to have though in a way it's not necessarily about the selling of it it's about them hanging it in their house you know what I mean yeah that's why specific exactly, yeah. specifically we buy things that people can have and if it was you know it's a it's a tender balance between limited and whatever but like if, yeah. we, could, if we could just print as many all the time as many as people wanted that's I, I would personally do that because I would like everyone that wants to have one to have one uh, well that's yeah. why uh, I don't hike my prices up to like a thousand pounds and stuff because uh, I want everybody to be able to afford one. Well this is where you and I have always been on the same page in terms of we want whatever we do with Vice Press and with the artists that we work with and we want it to be accessible we don't want there's got to be a limited edition nature to it in some regard but it doesn't have to be so you don't have to have these gatekeepers you don't have to have these people going oh well you clearly aren't, aren't a fan of that because you haven't got it and I've got one of 12 of these and it's like so what it's whatever what about the kid that loves Jurassic Park what about the kid that loves Ju- Ghostbusters that's the things you that. like yeah they're the things about about I am he's the, he's the kid <laughs> it's well, Ghostbusters it's, and Jurassic Park boy <laughs> we, it's what was why we started doing what we do yeah. part of the reason is because we wanted to do stuff the stuff that we enjoy it's Big like well yes. fuck it we'll start our own company well, I so like Marvel stuff and they ended up doing a lot of Marvel posters so yeah, yeah. yeah. story like yeah. What do I like? Absolutely nothing at this point. I am very tired. <laughs> very <laughs> tired. Like a, how long was your flight? Like 24 hours or something? Yeah, I had a had an eight, and then I st- uh, sat around an airport for four hours, and then I had a 14-hour flight after that. So I'm having a great time right now. I, I can't believe there's no Red Bull in this entire <laughs> place. <laughs> I was pleased. Somebody else, like, dig it up from somewhere. But alas, this is what you get. I mean, you guys have been working for so much uh, in the last couple of weeks. Uh, what was the most challenging work that you had to do in this last time? Or the, what cha- the most challenging aspect? Of what? Of your work in the last couple of weeks, because you've been turning out posters oh, for the, maybe, yeah, all the stuff we've said. So. Uh, I can't so say. Can't <laughs> time, it's so it's like timelines, isn't it? Like I think. Um, oh, well, it would be the Marvel stuff. Well, I don't want to speak ill of it. It's just because yeah, it's, it's was a hard. It, it's not. It's because they're just big. Pre- it's a big pressure game. Like there's a lot going on. They had to keep yeah. an awful lot of the new Black Panther film secret, and they couldn't share it with anybody really, mm. even me. So I didn't have reference and things of what the new suit looked like yeah. for quite a while until it was released in the trailer. If you want a challenge, make a poster for something where you can't show anything from the film. But that's that's, that's a, t- not, that's a that's tough one. That's not their fault, but that's, it's, that's challenging. Um, and but then we worked it out. Mm. It was wicked. I made I made myself sick making that Transformers poster out there. I don't know if anyone's seen it. It's but too many I, robots on it, isn't it? I put too many robots on it because they're going to be overexcited, right? The, the, the backstory, some, you probably heard some of it, but that's mum taped Transformers the movie off the tally with the ads in, and I wore that tape out. Like I must have watched it like like you, right? Hundred 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 times. Like so, when that came up, I was like, this has to be the poster. I'm getting one shot. I'm going to go hard. And I went a bit too hard, <laughs> and we didn't have enough time for me to go that hard, but I did it anyway. So I was just working like round the clock, drawing these stupid goddamn robots. Um, and yeah, I gave myself like a stress-induced stomach thing where I 
was just pain all the time. So I was just sitting there for a few weeks, like, no, please, just end, end. But I came good, and it's here, and it looks pretty good. And then you're like, I'm done, and I was like, yeah, that's it. Don't you do. Can you just change that character? Don't you dare. I think then we spent about a week, week deciding yeah, yeah. where the titles are going to go and the foil and how it's going to be printed and which ones are regular. Actually, like, I don't know why I've bought this up because now I'm flashing back. I'm flashing back. <laughs> and then, there. and then, dickhead here sent the wrong files to the pr- or named them yeah, wrong with well, the printer, whatever. so they're the wrong way around. And scene. And scene. Ask your audience, which, yeah. which Transformers poster is better? Oh, wow, well, with Martin Flores. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. I'll never, he's never going to say that any other time, so I'll take it. Is yeah. this better? Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's just me a little bit. Okay. So, are there any questions from the audience? Nobody's any questions. Yes. There's a man. Thank God. <laughs> we're totally Gee, ripping we're out. ripping there. We're, we're, we're ripping. Hello. Um, hopefully, this is something you might be able to answer. Um, I don't know whether you have any experience of sort of working on, you know, really whether you've actually done the, the commercial art for like larger, like the actual working art for posters. So, you know, you look at Star Wars and you have these posters with face here, face here, face here, sort of blue on one side, orange on one side, all the tropes. Um, I guess there's a lot more freedom to do what you want in terms of composition, in terms of layout. You're not being forced to, to really throw in all of these star lines and things like that. Um, yeah, yeah, so I think... What's the question? So the question is, well, I, well, I get... I, I think this is a question. So um, <laughs> it's a very good... So when you, like... If you're asked to work on a piece of for Marvel, I guess, where is the... Um, what kind of guidelines do they give you in terms of the commercial aspect of Zero. it? Zero. Yeah. Zero guidelines. I get to do anything I want except for legal stuff. So there might be a legal... Thing where in one of the actors contracts they've got to be on the poster or if you put on um, for, well, for, for example if you put Chris Hemsworth on you've got to put Natalie Portman on Yeah. then we found out if you put them on you've got to also put on Tessa Thompson we found that out at the last minute and that's a legal thing because of contracts so that's not a creative decision you just then have to figure out a solution to, to the poster uh, if you want to have the people on it, yeah, you know, or you could go likeness free and just do something artistic. But creatively, uh, at Disney and Marvel and any and any job really I've yeah. ever had, other than like an initial brief where they might say, I don't know. If, for example, if you're doing Doctor Who, they would say, Can you put Doctor Who on it? <laughs> yeah. And I would be an idiot if I didn't put Doctor Who on a Doctor Who poster anyway, right? No, but that's going to be like a Doctor thing. Who on, sorry. <laughs> Everyone loves my little blue box. It's different, isn't it? Box. Box. So, uh, so it's kind of like um, stuff like that isn't really a problem because yeah. I understand that it's it's got to be done. Yeah. I'm not going to do Black Panther without the Black Panther on. Uh, but the creative side of it, in terms of the composition, the colours, the layout, is a hundred percent freedom on every job I've ever had. I think. Good question. Are, are there the unicorns in those ones? There is unicorns. In which one? In, in, uh, in the, the latest Marvel ones. The Wakanda one? For example. Yeah. Okay. I think the other thing, the other thing with the commercial work, like, so there's two, in terms of what we do with Vice Press and what Matt and Flory do, there's kind of two strands. There's the commercial work in terms of where we're working on or where they're working on movie posters for releases um, or where we're working with clients on DVD covers and things like that. But then there's the... Um, home products, so the, the consumer side of things, and the the rules to those are very different. There's a lot more, in some ways, there's more freedom around consumer products because we're developing those, and when we go to licensors to develop a print for Jurassic Park or whatever, we show them what we're doing and what our work is like, so they know what to not. It needs to have don't. dinosaurs on it. Yeah, it needs to have dinosaurs yeah. on it, but not Sam Neil. Um, but then there are the restrictions around things like likenesses and stuff, which maybe when you're doing a film poster for a commercial release or DVD covers or whatever, there might be less restrictions because it all depends on where the products are going. So um, I think what you're saying is there is no answer. It just depends job yeah. by job on what they say. Yeah. Always take a punt, see what happens. Yeah, so you always, always nice... go for the dream first. So you go, yeah. this is the dream, and then it'll go to the legal department, and they'll go. Uh, no, 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 yeah. no, no. If, yes. it, if it looks good enough and I think it's interesting enough, you'll get at least sort of, you'll get 
in, yeah. the, in the door. It might not make it, but... Yeah. You, and you might end up... I think you'll usually end up with at least 50% of that, whatever you're coming. Oh, yeah. If it, it's good enough, yeah. But then it kind of... Sometimes it creates an interesting creative challenge. Like, it's been no secret. We, I mean, I've spoken about it enough. We've been trying to do Ghostbusters for, for years. And there's various things within Ghostbusters that kind of mean we can and can't do it. And when we were much smaller, those restrictions were they wouldn't have made it commercially viable for us to be able to do that. But now actually we're in a position where we kind of know more artists and we kind of got a broader customer base and collector base. And actually those restrictions that we had two, three, four years ago, they're not as, they're not as um, binding as what they used to be because actually we know what we can do. What well, we're going to talk about next. <laughs> Gareth, Gareth had a question today. Hey. Hello. What's up, Gary? No, we don't do that anymore. No, we don't. No, no, no. Uh, Hello, we're no, still Gary. Hi, oh. Gary. Hi. Hi. Uh, questions are two-parter. Firstly, oh, how, firstly, how do you sleep at night? And secondly, <laughs> not well. Uh, <laughs> not not right now. He's black. Uh, He's jet lagged. Uh, secondly, what I want to ask, obviously, we're talking about sort of your own creative processes and, and such, but you I, obviously you've done things like Castell, Jaws, um, uh, with the the, the three D uh, poster, and you've done the uh, Struzan. Uh, Hellboy and, and various other bits and pieces with uh, so previously existing work. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask how involved that process is, like what what your sort of involvement is when you're talking with the estate in terms of communication with the estate and and the uh, you know the input you have into creating that into say for example a screen print. Do you want to start on that. So, I think what, so when we do like an old classic poster yeah. and re release, yeah. when you bring it back. You could, yeah. if you want to, just take the asset of, say, the Jaws poster, you know, uh, because we've got that license, and we could just print it. Same with the thing. Same, same with, with the thing or anything. But it's better, I think, we've always thought to try and get in touch with the artist or the estate because then you can add a certain credibility. element of yeah, credibility and authenticity to it. Plus, sometimes they've got the original painting. So you can get it scanned up to modern standards because a lot of the time the assets um, that studios have I was gonna say, I think, great quality. I think the more interesting part of that is actually the process of putting yeah. those, putting those together. So I, like on Back to the Future, I just had Drew's Drew's painting, and then I had to remake the logo and the type and, and match it to the original poster and bring it up to a modern standard because in 1985. Yeah the way they printed things and the way they made things were obviously not the same or not as the same quality. Well, you, and you can't, like, to if you want to scan it at high enough quality to... If you grab an original print... You just get dots. You just get dots. So yeah. at, that's a, that's a, that's the point where you end up, like, repainting some other guy's painting or... I've done that. I've repainted like the that. thing before. But, like, so then when you get the original painting, if you scan that in and you print it that, at a high can... standard, you get all the brush strokes and you mm -hmm. get all the original sort of textures and... yeah. Uh, it can look a lot more vibrant. Yeah. You can tell when they're done properly, like other than uh, again, like like we were saying before, you can always tell when something's done properly as opposed to just like we're just gonna, effort, we're just printing it off. It, yeah, yeah. Like and the you brought up Hellboy, Gareth, as an example. So that was a really good one because that was created. Drew uh, was commissioned by Guillermo del Toro to do that artwork for the film, and it was intended to be the theatrical poster, but. Universal decided they didn't want to use that for, um, you know, just viable reasons. So that was never used for its intended purpose. So we worked with Drew and his manager to create that. And Matt, you did the, a lot of the credit I the, placement. I typed and, up all of the credits, yeah. So there's, there's, in, there's, sure there's aspects of that. And there's, there's loads of, um, yeah, like, Back to the Future <laughs> stuff as well that would be cool to do because there's stuff that's existing, Alvin, things. And by working with those estates, building that relationship up and fostering that trust, they start to then let you do things. Like the Les Edwards, the thing. Again, we could have easily just done that without any involvement from Les. We worked with him and his wife. We got the original scans. You repainted all of that. I did repaint that, yeah. And like, no one had reached out to him in 30, 40 years to do that. And it's kind of, it just feels nice. And you're doing something that's actually credible and decent. Go, Tom. Yeah, how's it on the, on the, on the artist side? Is it, do, they, do they feel, uh, do they get in touch with you directly or is it just via management? Because I was wondering, if they like saying something like that, oh yeah, I love that you guys do it, and like repainting it, and turn it well, and I like, give you like the stamp of approval, is that, is that a thing? Or so it's, you, so it's yeah so it's usually like whoever controls their estate like so with Drew I've spoken to Drew's wife and his manager and um, John Alvin who's sadly no longer with us it's his wife that does that 
Um, Les, we spoke to Les and his wife. Wise, wise man. They're very his good wives. at them, like, helping you out. Well, I, I mean, would basically be a hobo <laughs> if I didn't have my wife. <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't be here. I'd be in the street, <laughs> <laughs> drunk, <laughs> if I could get hold of some booze, you know. Yeah. That'd be me without Sounds my wife. Right. I think that's the plan I'll, for I'll tonight. I'll for beer. Yeah. Is there any more questions? Any other questions? Yeah, Dave, oh, there's Dave. a chat. There go. We go. Uh, contentious question. Uh, you do some great litho work. We know that. Uh, Blade Runner, movie full, excellent Ferg. Thank you. When will you get some screen prints, please? Ah. I know well, you have, I know you uh, have this question. Uh, when are you going to get some screen prints? Yeah. I got a, I've got some screen prints with me this weekend. I've got a Batman one. That's a screen print. Um, basically, when uh, I think the art is worth it. For a screen print because screen printing is when it suits it yeah worth it, it. Re- <laughs> worth it <laughs> no when it's worth it because to do to do a screen print of a painting or, or something that's got complicated colours and gradients and stuff you shouldn't really be doing that as a screen print that that's just a weird fallacy that's come up in the past sort of ten years uh, because of like the Mondo collectors and stuff which is fine. Which we played into I like too. A, yeah, but I like a, a screen print that is obviously a screen print more than a screen print that's got 18 layers to try and look like a, a, a litho, basically. Whereas you can do a litho and it'll look better. And to be honest, the movie posters applies. originally... Movie posters originally would have been uh, lithos anyway back in the yeah, day. And the ones yeah. that are worth more money than screen prints are lithos. It's like it's so it's, no screen prints anymore. <laughs> hey, I don't have to do the steps. Like I, I absolutely love not doing screen prints. Oh, at screen the print steps are really hard. It's a really nightmare. Hard. It's like that when you kind of come into like the boring business side of that is like, do you want to put restrictions on an artist? Do you well, fundamentally? It's about the quality of the art, the quality of the final product. Well, when the art suits it, it like yeah, the like They Live by Tom, Tom, that's a screen print. Drew's it's work perfect. generally. Drew. Yeah, yeah. There's ones where it's like, okay, yeah, screen print. Mm. Yeah, straight off. Uh, but me personally doing screen prints, it's just if I think the art would work as a screen print. When the only discernible difference is going to be a twenty pounds different in price point, it's yeah, like because it costs so much more. It's, there's it's, there's also the point that can be made that the world has changed in a lot of ways. Yeah, and it takes a long goddamn time sometimes to actually produce the prints now. The screen like, print lead times are like and, months and months. And those and months those are because like it's a it's a very popular thing. There's uh, but these paper shortages and all sorts yeah, of stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, uh, uh, and it's just a thing on top of a thing on top of a thing on top of a thing that equates to you get it next year. Like, well, all, what we've been trying to do, though, the game, another thing that I've been trying to do yeah. with the lithos to make them slightly more interesting than just a print is doing like your spot varnishes, foil paper. Um, and other kind of interesting finishes and techniques. The paper we use is screen printing paper. Oh yeah, but just to, like, just to make it more um, interesting than just a print on paper, you know? Yeah, yeah. We could put neon ink. But I've been thinking we've done a bit of neon ink in some of the lithos Blow as well. In the dark so as well. in a way, we've started treating them a little bit like a screen print. It, it's it's just you can get a lot more detail in terms of gradients and um, you don't have to worry so much about Doing so, 20 screens. I would say the future of the, the hobby or whatever you want to call it is probably a healthy mix of a, a lot of things, but litho screen prints when it's warranted, little G uh, little G like, clays. Like, like the other guys don't really do them, do they? Like so, bottleneck and mono no. don't do litho really. They will. <laughs> give it, give it Mark a few more my words. They will. <laughs> it's cheaper, yo. They make more money. <laughs> there is that. But uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's what you'll see. You'll that's see why a, you'll we see can a keep our prices quite well, quite reasonable and low because yeah. the screen print is going to cost a lot to produce, and it just has to put the price up. It's inclusivity, right? It's making. I want everybody sure... to be able to get one. Yeah, we want to kind of like we want yeah. That open editions. Oh well, the same with edi- like what we've done with editions. We're, originally, that was open edition, but we've now kind of we're now capping them at a thousand. Um, because like that things sounds like a lot. It, well, it, it but like, we things, like that Andrew man. Swainson's so. Jaws is like twenty off of hitting that, yeah. and like yeah. Patrick Collins' The Thing was That's close, it. and this it just it, brings more people in as well. And yeah, it's, uh, you get new new people, and it's gatekeepers. It's, it's gatekeepers again. No isn't gatekeeping. It? We don't want gatekeeping. If if you're the type of person that goes on the internet and goes, I don't like you because you don't like the Last Jedi. 
or vice versa or whatever. That's just not cool. Yeah. I mean, we, we all like The Last Jedi. Yeah, right? we all like The so, Last Jedi. So, you know, who's right and who's wrong. <laughs> I know there are certain members it, in this audience that <laughs> dislike The Last Jedi, but I'm not going to point to them. No. Has he, <laughs> has he also got a microphone? All right, any more? We got a question. Yeah, we've got another question. Back, just, back. just one more, sorry. Oh, right. oh, no, because no. you mentioned something and then it got and then it made it create a question in my head. It's your, oh, no, it's you, your you're more. This so, is what we're here for. So you Gareth. talked about you talked about uh, broadening audience. You know that that editions can broaden audiences. Um, but I wondered whether you know <clears throat> the the subjects that are covered in in this sort of hobby are quite. It's quite a it's quite a niche number of genres, um, and whether. Is, there, is it your own personal interest in, in certain genres that restricts what posters you will and what will not do? And will you do a poster for Legally Blonde, please? Hey, mate, if I can come at it, like, it's interesting that you say that because it's, I think some of the better posters that I've made are things that I would go, oh, no, I don't really, ah, uh, It can be, can't it, yeah. Because there's something about, I think, we both have the same, we have a problem-solving brain. We just happen to solve visual problems right so when someone says I want a poster for Legally Blonde I go no way and then I, look, I start thinking and I go oh hang on a sec How could we make I've a started now I've started that? ruminating yeah, yeah, yeah. on the the problem so mate if it popped if you promise to buy 300 copies of it I'll make it next week yeah but <laughs> it's, like, it's, yeah. it's a bit like I was talking about before these things have to be they are a commercial product in the end yeah. like, it has to be there has to be a few hundred people that would like a legally blonde. There's poster. an element as well of like one for us and one for them that we can yeah, do. We so do. like we're gonna do a lot of Jurassic Park posters because everybody buys Jurassic Park posters. Yes. And Jaws. we do we do like Jurassic Park. We like Jaws. it as well, but um If I could just draw dinosaurs it's like, forever, it's like, I probably uh, would. At Star Wars posters, isn't yeah. it? People there's always a big wealth of people buying Star Wars posters, which is why I've made lots of Star Wars posters. But every time you do, someone online says, yeah. "Oh, I'm a but stop, <laughs> stop buying them then. Stop buying yeah, them then. Don't um, you know what I mean? But then we throw in well, a Dark Man. We throw in Dark Man because I love Dark Man. We sell and... like twenty copies. Of it. <laughs> yeah. So what? It's one. Of, it's my favorite poster we've done this year. That yeah, best poster of the year. So, definitely so been. there it's is. Amazing, um, so, so it's yeah. all, it's like accessibility to licenses as well. We've got huge long lists of stuff. Like we're going through um, acquiring new licenses at the minute, and it's not quite legal. But stuff like. Dirty Dancing and yeah, Reservoir because they'll go, they'll go. Like we want you to do Minions or whatever. You know, if yeah. you're talking, we're not talking to Universal like about Minions, but if you were, they go, we want you to do Minions because that's our big brand and we're concentrating on Minions. And then we go, yeah, okay, but can you just throw in some random old movies? Like and they're like, what movies? Or, like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, fine. So they're kind of we we have to keep the lights on. We have to feed our kids. But like we still want to make sure. But also doing it with stuff we enjoy. We're not everything we do. All the titles we do. All the licenses we do. Either both me and Matt, or at least one of us, loves and has a working knowledge of that thing. And then we make sure, like Matt said earlier, that the artists are into that as well. So that everything we do, even the most popular stuff, has love and care and interest behind it and credibility. But then we do add in the the random stuff as well but we're not going to you know lose our houses because we've done a dark man print kind of thing but we are trying to be a bit more risky with stuff as well not risky but a bit more yeah, legally blonde's not happening there, Gary. <laughs> no, Inter- legally interesting blonde. we want we want there's yeah there should there should be interesting this should be the you know it's another dinosaur yes okay but yeah. then there should always be here's the thing i guess what's the point of doing this if there's no you're not pushing if you have an, I'll have an idea and I'll go, oh, and then I'm, I will I need a, yeah. yeah. I get, we, we're kind of close to time, which is oh, we, we managed to fill it. It's absolutely rambling. But I guess, like, a question from me, which might be fun, in terms of... Well, on for the us or for them? <laughs> well, for everybody. Maybe not you. But, like, like on the back of um, Gareth's question there, like, as a bit of a curveball property, I know generally you'd pick Star Trek and I'd pick Ghostbusters. I'm not going to do that. But if there was anything that you'd like to work on that you haven't done... And similar, Tom, you, if there's anything that you kind of, that you haven't seen a post for that you'd like to, like, I who wants to go already. first? Uh, it's RRR, of course. Right. RRR. 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 You, I knew you this were going to say movie. that. What a bloody hell, man. Every time. Did you watch it again? No, yeah, it's you made was, me waste three, three hours of my like, goddamn no, life. No, no, no. There are the okay. fans here. I know. I uh, know. I for me, I RRR. would go, like, some old school 50s. Uh, I like, um, 
this island Earth and Forbidden Planet and stuff like that. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'd go Forbidden Planet. Yeah. I want to make probably more horror films and stuff like that in the vein of the Halloween that I just did because there's some and like the bit like uh, the I don't know if everyone's like seen Elm it. Street and stuff. Yeah, yeah, them all those. But I want to do specifically. I want to boil those ideas down to something that is relatively close to something that could have existed in that time. Like, I, I think that's where that... I really enjoy how that Halloween poster, my one, yeah. how that works. I don't know if anyone else cares, but, like... I like oh, it. Yeah, I, I, like, I like it. Kate said to me, that's my wife, she said to me, um, I like that more than your one. See, I knew I liked it. Yeah. I like it, like it. Just yeah. need to speak into the mic. Huh? You need to speak into the mic. Into the mic? Yeah. And no one here. I was going to do it delicate, uh, subtly, but I thought, no. You Sorry. ruined this whole podcast. Have I just now. been, have I just, have I been screaming at everyone like this, <laughs> thinking that they can hear me through the headphones? So what was your film? Ow. You didn't choose one film. I didn't choose one film. You uh, just said all, all the horror movies. Just, uh, just anything where I get to draw a monster or a, or a man or a, a scary house or something. Like, I don't That'd know. That'd be cool. I think for me, uh, I would say Airplane. That'd be cool. Or uh, I had another one. I think Army of Darkness. Those two. That that I has think to. Airplane Army of Darkness Army has Darkness. to happen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That has to happen. We'll do screening. Does that have year. to happen? Let's do. Let's do Army of Darkness. Who'd next come see year? an Army of Darkness screening? And a poster for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, there's a awesome. few hands. So right. we've got like five people coming to the screening. And we're in. We're in. <laughs> Hasn't stopped us before. <laughs> it's yeah. like twenty people in this room, and we've been prattling on for an hour on the, so. on the subject of that though, we genuinely do when people email in, in and comment we do generally take heed of that we would like to do more screening screenings are fun the more event filled if there are films we've kind of leaned more into horror of late but if there are things that people genuinely have an interest in and it's stuff me and Matt care about let us know oh, like that little if if we care about <laughs> it because you could say oh I'd love to do this and like, no don't like that go away should we wrap it up yeah let's wrap it up uh, yeah, if, if you have suggestions, please let us know, obviously, uh, on the uh, social media, Vice Press, uh, news, yeah. everywhere. Yeah, email, and, uh, carrier yeah. pigeon. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Flory has his own Instagram channel as well, and uh, Twitter, and uh, Matt Ferguson is Cakes and Comics on Twitter. I'm, I'm going Instagram probably now, because yeah, Elon's Ferguson ruined Ferguson. Twitter. Exactly. I've been working so hard on Twitter, and now like it's just all, he's pulled oh, the rug. Thanks for nothing, Thanks Elon. for nothing, you absolute turd. But yeah, you'll find me at Drop Mag Official uh, everywhere, and yeah, just uh, hit us up uh, some messages if you have suggestions yeah. for movies in the future, and also if you just want yes, to chat. Yes, we'll I do mean, that. You don't. We're need. here. There's going to be uh, the Vice Press Open Channel again with new episodes soon, and uh, yeah. yeah. When is that going to happen? Are you we have your book available to buy. Yeah. Oh yeah, thirty-five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Not thirty pounds. Thirty-five pounds. It's a book. With pictures in it, I can't remember what the pictures are of. Oh, there's Nan Lawson. She's oh, it's picture. like pictures from films and stuff, but done like an art, a, a classical artist style, exactly. right? So like a like a an Edward Hopper version of basically if you of, of the Batman. If you like if you like Batman. our stuff, there's much better artists all in the one book yeah. than that. <laughs> Not us. But genuinely, I've thank you very much. All over it. It's really yeah, it's disgusting. It. My the state of it. Just you're like an you're like an oily boy or something. Oh, yeah, well, I've got a big yeah. Greasy uh, boy. <laughs> please, please hit us up. Uh, we always like to talk, and especially on the on the open channel. I mean, Sorry. in the comment sections, we are everywhere. We're That's there. yours. We now. will uh, listen, listen, it, man. <laughs> listen to your suggestions. Yeah, just make noise while we are talking. But yeah. Bye. Sorry for talking over you, Tom. Yeah, thank you so much. Sorry, I won't do it again. You thank can you. finish now. We're done now. Someone's going to go through this table in a minute. I think. Okay. It is like a wrestling table, though, isn't it? It's a it feels like do some All right, wrap it up, wrap it up, wrap it up. I think we got some, some presents. Yeah, we don't. You don't find yeah. them under your seats like yeah, Oprah, yes. but... Uh, I can stand over there. We're right. going to hand them out, some, some pin batches for you coming here. And, uh, yeah, uh, hit us up, as I said, everywhere on the social media. We'll see you soon. Thank you guys for Thank joining. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, guys. Yay. We did it. We did it.